Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com and in today's After Effects tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a nice grungy rusty checker plate texture for use in all your heavy metal high tech projects. As usual it uses the standard tool set in CS3, CS4 or CS5 and you'll find the project file for this on my website at shortformvideo.com so if you want to skip the tute and uh, head straight to the site, grab the file, that's where you'll find it. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a new composition and we'll call it Diamond Tile. Um, as you can see I've already set it up to uh, the way I want it which is 100 uh, pixels wide by 100 pixels deep. The, the duration really doesn't matter because um, it's going to be a still frame anyway so we'll just uh, hit OK and move on. Next thing we need to do is create some guidelines so uh, hit Control R to bring up the rulers and just drag a guideline in to the zero Point, and you can see in the info box up at the top um, it'll give you an idea of where the guideline is as you drag it. Next one's going to go at the 30 pixel mark and we'll just create some more at exactly the halfway point on the horizontal and the top and bottom so again zero pixels and 100 pixels. One more on the vertical at the 15 pixel mark so as you can see we've got a 30 pixel wide by 100 pixel deep um, template. Now we go to the pen tool select a nice medium grey for our fill and just make sure the no stroke option is checked. Okay so with the pen tool we're just going to create a basic shape so click at the intersection points to create a rough diamond. Don't worry about uh, getting it too close to the uh, intersection points just yet because we'll be tightening them up later. So that's the rough diamond created. We'll just tidy it up a bit with the uh, regular cursor tool and you'll find they uh, snap to the rulers that we've set up. Now that's not quite the look we're going for, we just need to make a couple of small changes. So go to the pen tool again hold down the button and select the Convert Vertex tool. Now if I zoom in to show you what happens, we're going to convert the vertices on the horizontal plane, so this one and this one, and that'll just give us a nice rounded diamond. Okay, back in the shape layer, twirl down the menu, select the contents and shape number one, and hit Control D to duplicate it twice. So we've now got three rounded diamonds. Twill down shape 2 and select transform. Hold down shift and just tab the cursor key until it's in the right place. Do the same with shape 3 and this one's going to go right up to the edge. Now we'll just take shape 2 and center it up a bit. Okay, that looks good. So we can actually kill these uh, guidelines now so you can get a better look of what we've done. So I've got a nice um, three diamond checker plate tile. Now it's not quite finished. Um, if we were to use this as it is, the checker plate tiles would all be close together. So we just need to create a little bit of border space around the diamond. So I hit Control and K to bring up the composition settings. And I'm just going to tweak the width and the height to 110 pixels wide. And as you can see, that just gives us a nice small border around the outside of the tile. Next thing to do is create a new composition. We want this to be fairly large, so I'll pick the uh, HDTV 1080 preset, which is a uh, square pixels 1920 by 1080. Um, the frames per second, again, it's a still image that we're creating, so none of this matters. And we'll call this Repertile. Hit OK. Drag the diamond tile into your Repertile composition. Go to your effects and presets panel and type CC Repertile and drag that onto the Diamond Tile component. In the Tiling Options box, select Checker Flip 45 
and then just expand left and right so that it fills the frame. And there you have our basic uh, checker plate pattern. Now, I actually want the tiles to be slightly smaller than this, so what I'm going to do is go back to our uh, shape layer and our diamond tile properties. With the shape layer selected, hit S to bring up scale, drop it down to 50%, and then hit Ctrl and K to bring up the composition settings, and take that down to 55 and that just shrinks the whole thing by 50%. If we go back to our repertoire, tile, you'll see we've got a lot more um, diamond tiles in view. It gives it a slightly more um, complex look. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is go to the Effects and Presets panel and type Roughen to bring up the Roughen Edges effect. Drag that onto the diamond tile. Go to the Edge Type options and select Rusty Color. And you can see that applies a rough, rusty effect to the uh, project as a whole. Now I'm just going to tweak this a little bit because it's a, it's a bit rough. So in the border, I'm going to select 4. The edge sharpness, I'm going to take that up to 1.5. And complexity to 4. If I scroll back in, you see it's given us that nice nibbled, eroded look that I'm after. Once you've done that, in the Reptile composition, right-click on the diamond tile, select the layer styles, and bevel in the boss. Now the default settings are good, but they're not quite what we're after. So go to the bevel and emboss options, select chisel soft, drop the size down to about 3, and that gives us that raised embossed look that we're after. Okay, our next step is to create a background. So uh, right click and select New Solid. Using the eyedropper, pick the same grey you used for the um, diamond texture and just select that and we'll call it Checker Plate Background Colour and hit OK. Drag it to a point underneath the diamond tile and it gives us a solid checker plate look. It's not quite finished yet. Um, those of you that have been following these tutorials regularly will remember the brushed metal um, project that I did a while back and we're going to use the same thing here. Go to your effects and presets panel and type noise. Drag the noise effect onto your background colour and I'll just uh, hide the diamond tile so we can see what we're doing a bit better. In the Effect Controls panel, select 100% for the amount of noise. Uncheck the Use Color Noise and uncheck the Clip Result Values. Go back to your Effects and Presets panel and type Fast Blur. Drag that onto your background color again. Select Horizontal check the repeat edge pixels box and increase the blurriness to about 150. And that gives us that nice brushed metal effect that we're after. Again, because the noise effect is actually motion, we need to uh, freeze frame that. So with the background color selected, hit Control, Shift and C to create a pre-comp. And we'll call this brushed metal. Check the Move All Attributes into the new composition and hit OK. Now you can right click on the Brushed Metal composition, go to Time and just select Freeze Frame. And that will keep it static. Now if we just bring the visibility of the diamond tile back, you can see we're getting there. The one problem is the tiles don't reflect the brushed metal texture that's beneath. So we just need to check, change the blending mode. So right click on the diamond tile, go to Blending Mode, and select Darken. And if I scroll in, you can see that the brushed metal is now showing through on the checker plate diamonds. 
Still a couple more things to do here before we move on. I just want to roughen up the uh, brush metal texture a little bit. So uh, go back to your effects and presets panel. Find the fractal noise effect and drag that onto your, onto your brush metal. Drop the contrast of the fractal noise effect down to about 50%. And change the blending mode to soft light. And that just gives us a nice roughened up look to our base texture. Now I want to add the rust splotches. So the first thing we're going to do is select both of the um, layers in the Repertile project. Hit Control, Shift and C. We'll rename it Rust Precomp. Make sure the Move All Attributes into New Composition is checked. Don't check the Open New Composition and hit OK. And that'll merge them into a single um, composition that we can apply any new effects to. Now that we've got our Rust Precomp layer created, I'm going to select it and hit Control and D to create a second version. Then go to my Effects and Presets panel and type Burn to find the CC Burn Film. Drag that onto the top Precomp layer. In the Effect Control panel, I'm going to increase the Burn amount to about 18 and change the center point and the random seed until I get a nice blotchy black appearance. Then I'm going to duplicate the burn film effect three or four times and just play around with the center point of each effect and maybe the random seed value until I get the effect that I'm looking for. What you need to be careful of are these uh, spots because the burn effect, burn film effect actually um, simulates the effect of, of, of celluloid film being burnt um, and we don't actually want any holes in the, uh, in the top layer. Okay, so that's looking good. Back to the effects and presets panel, type CC toner. Drag the CC toner effect onto your top pre-comp layer. Check the shadows color button and pick a nice rusty orange color and hit OK. Check the midtones color and select white. Now I'm going to right click on the rust precomp top layer, select blending mode and linear burn. And now we can play around with the CC toner rust color until it looks a little bit more rusty and hit OK. Okay, we're on the final run now, so right click, create a new composition, again 1920 by 1080, and we'll call this Checker Plate Final. Drag the Repertile Comp into the Checker Plate Final, set it as a 3D layer, and now we can apply some lights to it. So I've selected a, uh, an intensity of 75 because we're going to use multiple lights just to make it a little bit more interesting. And just drag the handles until you've got a nice interesting light. And just duplicate that and position it over the other side. Maybe change the point of interest. Drop it down. Bring it a bit closer. Okay, final stage, right click, select new and adjustment layer. Find the curves effect and drag it onto the adjustment layer. And we're just going to give it a little S curve to give it a bit more pop. Okay, so there you have it. You can render this out as a PSD file or a TIFF or just leave it as is and use it in any of your project files. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the project file I've just created here will be available on my website at shortformvideo.com. So if you want, just go there, grab the uh, project file and use it in your own work. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.